Have you heard about the coastal grandmother style trend? Where well, today we're going to take a deeper dive into this trending style aesthetic. sponsored by Squarespace and I'll tell you more at the end. Hello ladies, welcome to today's video. I think you're gonna like this. I think a lot of you actually even found me because you were Googling or putting into your search engine coastal grandmother or coastal grandma. You'd heard about the trend, you put that in your search engine and along the way my blog post popped up because I gained about a thousand subscribers at my blog because of that one blog post. Now, I did not coin that phrase. That would be attributed to TikToker Lex Nicoletta, a younger woman who began to notice how much we all love and appreciate the style worn by more mature women in some very popular movies. A lot of those were produced by Nancy Myers, but not all of them. We're talking about things like Something's Gotta Give, or It's Complicated with Meryl Streep, or even one of my favorites is Letters to Juliet with Vanessa Redgrave. So those are the styles that we're talking about. It's, it's kind of that earthy, very casual, relaxed, and yet somehow sophisticated and elegant all at the same time. These styles feature a lot of things like linen and cotton and gauzy fabrics, very loose fitting garments and very bare minimal accessories, comfortable shoes that also though somehow look expensive and elegant, hats such as wide brim straw hats or bucket hats. The, the garments are loosely worn and yet they fit beautifully. They have kind of an expensive look to them and yet they look very comfortable and casual. We're talking turtleneck sweaters in the winter along with cable knit, chunky sweaters. And in the summer, like I said, we're talking those gauzy fabrics and those natural fibers. Although Lex Nicoletta encourages young women to follow her on TikTok and now Instagram if they want to emulate the coastal grandmother look, I have a different idea for us older ladies, and that is to take a deeper dive into that style aesthetic and think about what is it about it that we like and why are we pulled to it? Why do we gravitate to it? So when we're talking Coastal Grandma, I think it's important that we realize that most of our inspiration for this theme is coming from fictional characters in fictitious movies. <laughs> So these are not real people, right? Now, other than the fact that people like uh, Martha Stewart and the Barefoot Contessa have also been credited with wearing the coastal grandmother style vibe, um, for the most part, we are pulling this style aesthetic from movies, from movie characters. So let's think about that. Who created those outfits? Not those actresses not even the producer or the director of those films. Instead, of course, they brought in costume designers who are skilled and experienced in creating wardrobes and then outfits for characters. When they do that, they don't just create outfits all willy-nilly, just throwing together what they think looks good. Instead, they are tasked with the job of helping to develop the character and therefore move along the plot by putting together outfits, wardrobes that reflect that character. So the very first time you see that character on screen, you're supposed to know something about her, her choices, her lifestyle, her personality, maybe even something about her history, all from looking at what she's wearing. So let's think then, like, like a costume designer would, and think about what made these costume designers pick the particular garments, the types of clothes, the types of fabrics that we see in this style aesthetic. Well, I think they're basing these things on uh, the personality of these characters, and they want us to get some feelings, right? They're, they're helping us to generate some feelings for these characters. I think that they're trying to create a woman who is mature in years. She's lived a little. She's been around the block. 
she has maybe mastered some things. She has had a career. She's been successful at it. Maybe she's retired from it. Maybe she's at the peak of her career. Maybe she has her career still going, but now she's at the beach, at her beach house. She's so successful. She's raised her family. Some of those kids are dysfunctional. <laughs> Others are very highly functional, but it is family and she values her family. She loves those kids. She loves those grandkids. She's involved in their lives. Sometimes she's too involved. Sometimes she'd like to be more involved, but she values people. She values her relationships. She values her family over other things. At this point in life, most of these characters, they have some wisdom. And in fact, they are the person that everybody else in the movie tends to go to for wisdom, for answers. And I've noticed something else too, is like a lot of these characters are women who measure out their words. They don't just say everything. They kind of wait. They've learned that they could say something, they could give their opinion, and it's just going to be ignored. So they wait until their family member, their friend, whoever comes and says, what would you do? And then they give the advice. So she's seasoned. She's learned a few things. She also like, she has time now for recreation. She has time for a garden. She has time to pick fresh flowers and decorate her home with them. She has time to take a leisurely walk on the beach with her dog. She has time to collect seashells. She has time to read a good book or have a glass of wine before dinner. She has time to meet with friends for a book club. She has time to do those things because she's already raised her kids, they're already gone. So is that beginning to sound a little bit familiar? Now I can't, all of those things don't necessarily resonate with me, but a lot of it does. And so that is why I think the Coastal Grandmother Style Essence really resonates with us. I think it resonates with younger women because it makes them think of their mother or their grandmother or that woman they want to become. I think it resonates with us because in many ways it's the woman we have become. So while the Hollywood costume designers are trying to tell a story with the wardrobe and outfits that Meryl Streep or Diane Keaton or Vanessa Redgrave or whoever are wearing, we ladies don't have to tell somebody else's story with our clothing. Instead, we can use our wardrobes and our outfits to tell our story. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think there are some lessons to be learned from this style aesthetic, not just style-wise, but in the way we think and in the way we build our own wardrobes and in the way we put together our outfits. You see, I think what's really most beautiful is when a woman kind of comes into her own and she's developed a little self-confidence and she's lived enough and she's been around the block enough that she's not trying to be somebody else with her style and she feels good in her own clothes and it shows. I think the most important thing that we can learn from the coastal grandmother style aesthetic is that the clothes you wear do indeed tell a story. They tell your story, whether you mean for them to or not. You know, there is actually a science called enclosed cognition. And what it means is that what you wear largely determines how other people respond to you and interact with you. For instance, when we see someone wearing a medical coat, we kind of give them a little bit more authority, a little bit of respect. We assume they have some answers and we, we treat them like we're the patient and they're the authority figure on medicine. Or when we see someone who is dressed up maybe in a blazer or a suit, we assume that that is an important person. They have important things to do. Um, when we see someone who is clothed in a sweatshirt and jeans, we assume that she is either just really relaxing and chilling today, or maybe she's cleaning out her garage. <laughs> so when we see somebody dressed a certain way, we respond to them, we interact with them based on what they're wearing. But in clothed cognition goes a little bit further. It also says that what we put on our bodies also affects the way we then interact with the world around us. So if I get dressed, I put on something that's a little polished, I put on something that feels a little special, that I'm actually gonna step out into the world a completely different way than if I just put on something and it has no meaning to me and it feels kind of itchy and scratchy and it doesn't even feel good and it doesn't fit real well and then I go out into the world and I'm not going to react to the world or interact with the world the same way I would if I had dressed in something that felt good and that feels polished and it feels like it reflects what I want it to reflect. 
So as we have talked about and thought about the coastal grandmother, whether that's your style or not, whether you like that earthy, relaxed kind of vibe or not, I think it does give us something to think about as mature women. And I think that it gives us some things, some goals too, some things that maybe we might want to do so that however we like to dress, whether we like that coastal grandmother look or not, we can also be somebody who then other people say, I want to dress like that. I want to look like that. Whether they exactly want to put on your clothes or not, that's, that's not the goal. We're not trying to make people envious. We're simply trying to inspire and to make ourselves more relatable and to tell our story through our clothing. So think again about those costume designers when they created those outfits and those wardrobes for Meryl Streep, for Diane Keaton, for Vanessa Redgrave, for whoever. They were trying to tell their story, the story of the character, not even of the actresses. They were trying to let us know something about them. And when we get dressed, we do the same thing, but we're not trying to tell somebody else's story. We're telling our story. And so it's very important that we put a little thought into it and a little effort into it. These women were meant to look like they were savvy that they were relatable, that they had a little bit of a relaxed life, that they valued family, that they had a history, and that maybe in their recent years they have cultivated and curated a wardrobe because one of the things I noticed about them is, is that for the most part it looks like their outfits were things that they just pulled from their closet and put on. They weren't outfits that they went out and shopped for. Even when these women in these movies get dressed for a special occasion like a wedding or a party, it looks like they just pulled something from the back of their closet that has been there for years. Maybe they haven't worn it in a while, but it's always been there. And they put it on with those same shoes they were wearing yesterday and they somehow looked effortlessly beautiful. So they were pulling these things from a curated wardrobe, a wardrobe that they had built over the years with fine fabrics and quality pieces that reflected them. I think that's why the costume designers chose things like relaxed fits, layered pieces, soft fabrics, subtle colors blended with earthy neutrals natural fibers such as cotton and linen and wool and silk, meaningful and impactful jewelry, practical hats and purposeful handbags, well-constructed but high quality and comfortable shoes, wash and wear hairstyles and subtle natural makeup. So I think those were some of the style goals that these costume designers had as they created these personas through these wardrobes and then their outfits. And that gives us some goals too. I think we have to have some goals. And here are some of the goals that I think will help you and me dress in a way that feels authentic and that tells our story also. Think about developing a smaller, well-curated wardrobe. I've said this so many times before, but I really encourage you to emphasize and to prioritize curating a wardrobe that you love more than building outfits. When we purchase outfits, or we just put together outfits, then we end up with just outfits. But I think that this kind of woman has a curated wardrobe that she can pull multiple things from because everything mixes and matches and all of it feels authentic to her. Another thing that I think the coastal grandmother has done and it can inspire us is to build a wardrobe and get, to, get serious about building a wardrobe that really reflects your lifestyle. Now, I'll admit I struggle with this because there are other things I like that reflect other lifestyles. Like I love suits and I love really pretty dresses and yet I don't have a lot of occasion to wear either of those things. And so if I'm really going to build a wardrobe that reflects my lifestyle though, then those things will actually look more authentic and they'll tell my story instead of somebody else's story that I wish I was. <laughs> so think about how you can really curate a wardrobe that tells your story by making sure that it matches your lifestyle. Another goal is to make sure that our wardrobes evolve over time and with our lives. You notice that in those movies that Diane Keaton or Meryl Streep play in, they do not dress, their characters intentionally do not dress in the same way that their grown daughters do. And remember, that was a wise choice on the part of the costume designer. They did that intentionally because they want you to know that she has evolved, she's older, she's more mature, she no longer does or 
or participates in the same things necessarily that her daughters do. And so our wardrobes also ought to be a little evolved. They ought to be a little different than what our daughters or our granddaughters wear. <laughs> and if they're not, then I think that looks disingenuous. It doesn't look like it fits who we are, our station in life, our season in life. Another goal I think we need to have is to prioritize quality. And like I said, this is a woman who has cultivated taste for quality. She has um, maybe built things. Like think about, for instance, your home. You, you probably have things in your home that you treasure that you've had for years. And the reason you have them for years is because that piece of furniture, uh, that drapery, that rug, it was built, it was made with such quality that it has withstood the years and you still value it, you still love it. I think as we get older, we really need to value quality in our clothing more too. Because when we wear clothing that looks cheap, that just looks kind of like throwaway, then it, it doesn't work with us. It doesn't work with our gray hair and the fine lines around our face. It just, there's a, there's a disconnect there. That doesn't mean that everything we wear and everything we own has to be expensive by any means. In fact, of course, you can find quality pieces in secondhand shops. So just think about that though. Think about, I don't need everything. I don't need a huge wardrobe. So therefore I can prioritize quality over quantity. Another style goal that I think will help us to create that kind of wardrobe that really reflects our story the way we want it to is to learn to wear neutrals beautifully. Now, the reason I have to say that, I know a lot of you kind of shy away from neutrals or you think that older women shouldn't wear neutrals, they, they make us look faded, but I have to disagree, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, neutrals are still trending. Yes, there are so many great colors that are trending too, but neutrals, just will always, always look more elevated than colors. That, that's just the fact of it, it's not the science of it. Neutrals look elevated. So if we want to look a little sophisticated while we're still looking relaxed and casual, then wearing those casual relaxed pieces, like I did in my travel wardrobe, in neutrals will look so much more sophisticated, just a little bit more elegant, and yet casual and relaxed. So at my blog, I have recently published a blog post about how to wear neutrals and not look washed out, but instead look vibrant. And that's what we wanna do. So I'd suggest you check out that blog post. There's a link to it in the description box below. So be sure to check there for that. Another goal that I think we have to have as older seasoned women at this point in our style journey is we really have to prioritize fit. You know, even if we're going to wear things that are comfortable and loose fitting, because a lot of us, that's just where we are. <laughs> we are just tired of things, you know, binding us and just being tight and being snug and all of that. So we don't want to do that anymore. We want to wear something that's draped, has a nice drape that just feels comfortable, feels soft. Fit is all the more important. So oversized things are in, drapey things are in. Think Eileen Fisher clothing that really is just kind of built, made, created for this season of life. Still, it is supposed to fit. So fit is so important. Now, another goal I think that will help us to tell our story and, and look beautiful doing it is to stay appropriately stylish. <laughs> and what I mean by that is we, at this point in our, our lives, our ages, we do not need to be chasing every trend that comes along the horizon, but we do need to participate in enough trends or do enough of the modern current things style-wise so that we still look stylish and we don't look like we're just wearing things from 20 years ago and the same way we did 20 years ago. Now there's a few ways you can do that really easily. One thing is watch for the current colors and the current neutrals. Right now, deep chocolate brown is really trending. So if you love brown, this is the time. Gray is actually still kind of trending too. Gray and brown are really interesting neutrals. So those would be some great ones to gravitate to. We also have some really good colors in style right now, a really nice vibrant red. We're still seeing that lilac color, even pink and yellow and orange are still trending. So if you're aware of the colors that are trending and you kind of incorporate some of those into your wardrobe, that's a really good way 
to look current, but still where the style it reflects you. Another way to stay appropriately stylish is to wear current jeans. <laughs> now, the main thing you could do for that is simply to have jeans that have that nice looser or straighter fit because that's really on trend. And it really goes well with this whole coastal grandmother thing because they are that relaxed jean. And what I'd stay away from are skinny jeans because while younger women can still wear them if they want to, Lord help them. <laughs> if we wear them as older women, I think we do just kind of look behind, like we, we just look a little bit behind. So get with the, the trends, get with the, you know, up, up to current, up to speed on your denim and on the colors. And then my third tip as far as just staying appropriately stylish is just to know enough about the trends that you can participate in one or two or three that resonate with you. Like if you like the ruffly sleeves, then you can do that. Or if you like um, the kind of more cropped length tops, then you can do that. If you like pearls, you can do that. If you like, uh, you know, there's just different trends pick and choose two or three. But remember, our goal is not to necessarily look like our daughters or our granddaughters, but just to be current. And then my last style goal that I think will help us to tell our story better through our clothing, the way that Coastal Grandmother does, is to give ourselves permission to make a few choices and to stick with them. Here's what I'm talking about. The way I see it is in those movies, it seems like those women have kind of decided, you know what? I'm gonna wear linen, even if it wrinkles, I'm just gonna wear it. Or they've decided things like, I'm gonna wear comfortable shoes. I'm not wearing pointy-toed high heels anymore. I'm gonna wear some comfortable shoes. Or they've decided things like, I'm gonna wear a bucket hat when I go out on the beach, even if my daughter tells me I look silly. Or they've decided, I'm gonna stop coloring my hair and I'm gonna let it go silver or gray. Now, Obviously, I'm not talking about being disrespectful, but I do think at this point in life, ladies, it is okay to make some decisions about our styles and say, this is how it's gonna be, and this is what I'm gonna do. So if you need to wear comfortable shoes, then you do that. You wear comfortable shoes. You can find you some cute, 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 pretty comfortable shoes right now, but you can make that decision and live with it and be happy with it. If like me, you just really wanna wear linen and you're well aware that it wrinkles, and you just don't care, then you just fill your closet with linen the way I've done. Or if you want to wear less makeup, then you just wear a little less makeup. Put on a little bit of makeup to, because we want to look presentable and we want to interact with the world. Remember that enclosed cognition thing? But you don't have to wear as much if you don't want to. If you want to stop coloring your hair like I've done, you just stop coloring your hair. Let me tell you a few other style choices you just might want to make and you just might want to say, well, this is how it's going to be. I mean, I think this is also reflected in the fact that maybe you've decided that from now on we're using our fine china, even if it's dinner on a Tuesday night. Or you may have decided on Sunday for lunch, we're using paper plates. We're not new at doing china anymore. Maybe you've decided that you want to wear your cashmere, even on just a regular day at home. You want to put that cashmere wrap around your shoulders. You're not going to save it for the really nice things. Maybe you've decided you want to wear your pearls whenever you feel like it. <laughs> So these are just some choices that I feel like, you know, as we get older, those sorts of choices kind of resonate with people and, and reflect this, this wisdom, this, this like we've, we've kind of arrived a little bit and we've put in the years, we put in the work, we played the games, we did the things, and now we are going to settle in to being who we really are and being comfortable in our own skin. So after taking a deeper dive into the coastal grandmother style aesthetic, I think the biggest lesson that we need to learn is, is simply really to be inspired by the storytelling that these costume designers did with these older women and their characters, their wardrobes and their outfits. And let's learn how to tell our own story with our own wardrobes and our own outfits. Instead of emulating the style that we've seen on the screen, let's tell our story so that we are women that others want to emulate with their style. And let's leave the copying to the younger gals and Lex Nicoletta. Today's video has been sponsored by Squarespace. They provide the beautiful and powerful platform so that you can build a website of your own. Even before I started Dress For My Day, I've had a couple of other websites actually where I would share devotional thoughts or just rambling thoughts. But if you would like to have a website where perhaps you share devotional thoughts, your pictures, your travel diary, whatever, you might want to check out Squarespace. They have beautiful platforms and all the tools that you 
would need to create and build your community and interact with your community through their comment functioning. You can post and schedule blogs, but also through their Squarespace extensions, you can even build a business there on your website. These new third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. So you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, and you can manage your members, send email communication, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform with Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash kharms, K-A-Y-H-A-R-M-S, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And I think you would really, you really might enjoy doing that. If that's something that you have been compelled to do and you've been thinking about it, don't waste another minute. Go ahead and go through that link down below and check that out. Thanks so much for joining me for today. It's been quite an unusual uh, video, I guess, but I just thought it would be nice to take a deeper dive into that coastal grandmother style. Thanks for being with me, ladies. I'll see you again really soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.